Welcome to the second video and in this video we're going to be looking at the components in LT Spice. So all the goodies in the components tab. So we're going to look at the basic components and then the components with settings. So how do we select components and how do we set up stuff like the voltage source. So let's get started. Next one was the components. Okay, <clears throat> I used the voltage source earlier. In here you'll find that these are the block brackets are, are files. So every time that there's an update, there will always be new components added in here. So we'll come to these in a moment. In here you will find current sources, voltage sources, uh, etc. So the basic current source is just called current. The diode that's on the toolbar is diode. Um, we've even included ferrite beads and the effects of that in here. These are dependent current sources or there's also dependent voltage sources here. So we have transconductances and basically perfect amplifiers, so to speak, included in here. Um, inductors, which is on the toolbar. LEDs, so if you want a symbol for LED and it will behave like a perfect LED if you set it up. Right here, if you right click it, pick new diode. All the diode types are available, so you just need to go and search for LED. And there is the model. So yeah, right click, pick new diode, and go and find what you're looking for. For most of the components, it is a right click and go and search. So, loads, variable loads. Um, NMOS, free terminal, four terminal, um, NPNs, different symbols. The one that you will use is just that one, and the PNPs is just this one. We can go ahead and place that one, pick new transistor. And if you scroll down the BC547, the one that you get in our component packets, right down there. Select it, and there you go. Okay. Menus. Scott key. Symbol, resistors, zeners. Voltage source. We will definitely use the voltage source. Characters. Um. Some of these are just plain um, the symbol for a component, so you can either use a perfect model. Some of them do not have models included in the software, and you need to add them using a SPICE directive. We will cover that in a later video of how to add components, and then you just link up the model with one of these. Okay. So, the voltage source and the current source. You can just go and place it down. This one right here, if you just want a DC source, you can just right click and change it. No harm done. Very simple. But, we don't just always want plain DC sources, so you can right click this and say advanced. If you go into advanced, here is some different settings. You can set up a pulse wave, a sine wave, exponential wave, and some other various, and even from a file. You can create your own and just with different points add it to this circuit. So if you're doing a specific project and there is a specific waveform that you need, just go ahead and create a file and insert it in here. 
Okay, so the one that you will typically be interested in is in the pulse and the sine wave. Also, if you're doing AC analysis, there is the AC amplitude on this side. You can just set that to one for a typical um, source if you're doing AC analysis. So then you don't have to do any conversions in the boat plot. The boat plot will immediately be correct because AC amplitude of one would be zero dBs. Um, you can also give this source parasitic property. So if it has a impedance or a capacitance of its in, in, internal to itself, so if this is a different system that you're trying to simulate, you can also add it in here. But I'm quickly going to go and make a setup for this in a simulation so that we can see the different properties for a sign and a pulse wave. So I went ahead and just made a plane resistor and a source. So let's go and get it set up. Let's start with a sine wave since it's really easy. Let's say we want something with an amplitude of 5 volts and a DC offset of 1 volt frequency of 1 kilohertz. You can add delay or a phase shift and specify a specific amount of cycles if you only want this thing to run for a short period of time. Let's say 5 cycles and, and then kind of stop giving output. So if you have outputs of different values that you want to simulate at the same time you can specify amount of cycles and you can specify after how long it will start to work so let's make this after 10 milliseconds it will start to to work frequency of one kilohertz amplitude of five volts this is the peak value and a dc offset of one volts if you add a negative it will shift down Okay, so this thing will have five cycles, start after 10 milliseconds at a frequency of one kilohertz, amplitude of five volts, DC offset of minus one. Okay, so this thing throws it over there, just move it. And you can also see all the specifics that you just added in the text. Okay. So I'm going to run a simulation for 20 milliseconds. So this thing should start off the 10 milliseconds, have uh, five cycles, one kilohertz. Let's run it and see. Select this node. Start it off the 10 milliseconds. One, two, three, four, five, and stopped. And there is your sine wave. It's moved one down with one volts, and we can see that we have a peak to peak of 10 volts. So yeah, plain and simple to set up the voltage source. Next, let's have a look at the pulse wave. So in the pulse wave, we have the initial value. So we, we want the signal to start off. So let's say it starts at minus two volts. What is its on voltage? So when it switches on, let's say that's two volts. So we're defining the, the maximum and the minimum. The delay time, like in the sinusoid, let's say two milli. Now, since this is a pulse, it has the up slope and the down slope that you can select this. So if you want a perfect pulse, you can make these one nano, one nano, don't make them zero because that's a discontinuity. Um, so let's say that this thing should be on for four milliseconds and the period, so the total length should be 10 milliseconds. And let's say we want to repeat this thing two times. Okay. All right, so there's our pulse defined. I'm going to simulate this for 50 milliseconds. Our whole um, 
our whole signal will fit. Let's run this. And there we go. The minimum minus two when it switches on at two milliseconds. And it's on for four. And down. And you can see that the period before the signal repeats is 10 milliseconds. It repeats twice and then it is totally off. So you can define pulse trains or binary inputs or whatever form you want to, to do in here. So if you want a trapezium kind of shape, you can also right click this and just edit the text in here. That one is the rising. This one is a falling. Let's make this two milliseconds. Okay. So now we should have a slope and we have trapeziums running in here. So the period is still the same. The on time is still the same. We just now have rise and fall times. So you can also use this pulse to create for yourself triangle waves and trapeziums if you want. Okay, let's say we want to make a triangle wave. So we can select the pulse again. Say we want it from zero. The on voltage is five. Let's give it five milliseconds delay, a rise time of five milliseconds, a fall time of five milliseconds. This means that our triangle is 10 milliseconds long. This T on make it zero. The period is 10 milliseconds and the amount of cycles, let's just, just make it repeat once. Okay. Like this. We're going to run the simulation for 30 milliseconds. Run. And there we go. It's off of five. Five milliseconds up, five milliseconds down and off again. So if you want to repeat this into infinity, you can just remove the cycles and it will continue to do its thing. And if you want to make it 100% triangle wave, just make it plus minus five volts and there you go. Right, that's the voltage source. So most of the components you can just find in here. You go in here, there's ADCs, all of these file names. Um, the components that you'll find in here is typically from linear technologies. So you will find that everything has an LT in here. So every single component from linear technologies, you can simulate them, um, which is kind of, kind of nice. So comparators, DAX, digital things, although I would recommend using Proteus when you want to go full digital simulation. Um, the digital library of Alti Spice is kind of limited. I won't even even go there. Um, different filters. Then miscellaneous. In here is batteries, single cells, poly stuff, um, crystals, all of those nice other. Um, symbols that, that you like to use. Um, I would recommend not to use a battery. I've seen some issues when people use a battery for a voltage source. Go with a voltage source in the basic library. But yeah, in, in here you will find or, or go with signal. 
this this is a nice one so if you want to tell yourself okay this is where you're going to put your ac signal and not just a dc source use this one in here you will also find triax diax um, signal controlled rectifiers all of the other symbols that you can think of So yeah, just just keep that in mind. Um, op amps, all the op amps from analog devices, all the op amps from linear technologies, and here at the back you have some perfect off amps so if you want to use a, uh, a perfect off amp um, use universal op amp too so you have a differential power supplies and the output and op amp one and op amp two is the ones that you use when you're including it using a uh, a spice directive so when you want to use an unknown op amp to, to the library, just go with op amp one and op amp two here. The spice directive of how to add components, we will do that in a later video. So, but for plan simulation purposes, just use the universal op amp to begin with. And yeah. Um, more libraries, power products, references, special functions. Here is some special features and stuff added. Um, filters you can buy. Um, tunable components, variable resistors, current sources, modulators, demodulators for the communication people. And then some switching chips. And that's the, the component. So go into this library, go and read around what you can find. Um, most of these components are defined and actual real components. And for these, if you add them, remember to right click and you can find all the components that is available in the library. And yeah, that is kind of all the components and special features. Play around with them. That way you will learn. So good luck with uh, uh, simulation software, play around, read up, use Google, and in our next video I will cover the simulation types that we have, and by then you should be clued up for the components and how to uh, construct. So every part of the video I will have a ready built, um, ready built circuit. So you can every time just pause the, simula uh, the, the video, build it yourself, and I would urge you to, to, to do the simulations with me and to see if you can get the same results. So yeah, good luck and see you for the next video.